Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and we are on our little homestead here with a brand new cow that we just got. She's actually pregnant. She's due this year supposedly on Christmas Day, so we'll see. But this is Emma and she is a Jersey cow. Now we're actually going to go right into the garden and I'm going to give you a little update because living here in Florida, we can garden pretty much all year round. Hi guys. Welcome to our garden. We're going to show you around. Yeah, so let's show you all some of the things that we've been growing. It is beginning of November 2017, and because we live in north central Florida, it's actually quite hot out today, and we can garden pretty much all year round, but this is actually my most favorite time to garden, right, Allie? This is when it's not too super hot to come out and even care for the seedlings and the starts and things, but we can also grow an amazing variety of stuff throughout the fall and winter here. So let's give you a quickie little tour of what we have in the ground right now. All right, so here is one little roll that we have of tomatoes, which a lot of people, when I post pictures on my Facebook or Instagram, are asking, you know, what kind of tomato varieties are we growing here? Because in November, I can grow a batch of tomatoes. Well, these actually I started from seed in late August, and they just went in the ground after Hurricane Irma. So these must have gone in the ground end of September. And so you can see that just a month and a half later or so, we already have them growing. Every single plant here either has fruit on it already or is flowering. So in Florida, we can actually grow two seasons of tomatoes, one in the spring and one clearly in the fall. So here we have a black tomato variety called vernissage. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but it looks like a French word. And they're kind of striped, so you can see that this, these plants already have little tomatoes on them. This one has little ones here as well. And all, I think maybe the first six or seven plants are of the same variety. So if you come over here, we'll show them some bigger ones. Let's get close up here. Look at these. And so they're going to be like a dark, rich, reddish. They call them a black variety of tomato because they're a dark color. But this one's going to have a ton of them before we get our next frost. Now here we have, I think I have maybe three or four plants of this variety. You can see all the little yellow flowers. They're ready to start putting out all the little tomato fruits. And this is a uh, jelly bean variety. But you can see everywhere you see the little yellow flowers is going to be little bundles of super cute and delicious tomatoes. I planted my carrots here. Okay. You have to go in and weed around those a little bit, right? Because they're, they're so delicate when they first are getting sprouted, the little carrots they are, that it's hard to go in there with any type of a tool really and pull because you'll take the carrots out with it. So the kids have to come in here with their little bitty fingers and pull all the weeds around them. So this is carrots that are already started. And then what do you have over there, Jonathan? Some more carrots that we just put in a couple of days ago. And they haven't sprouted yet, okay? Then over from there, let's walk over here and see. Keep going. What do we have here? Do you remember what this is? Yeah, beets. Beets. So we had planted some, but they were old seeds from like 2013. And so they didn't all sprout. We kind of saved one. It looks like there's another little one here, but they're kind of I just not really well started. So we went ahead and used a batch of seeds that were packed for 2017, which is the year that we're in. And we planted a whole nother little batch here of these Detroit dark red beets. OK, excuse me. And this. Yeah. What are those, Allie? Do you remember? Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi. And that's actually a vegetable that a lot of people are not familiar with but I actually love it. It looks like you would start it in a pot like you would any of the other brassicas like the cauliflowers, broccoli, and kales, and cabbages, but it's actually, the, the way that I like to grow them is to just sprinkle the seeds on uh, the soil that you're gonna plant it in. So I actually don't start these from a seedling or from a start uh, in a separate pot. So I just put these straight in the ground and they look pretty good, not too big, but this one's doing the best of all the three. And then down here, Jonathan, what, we, what do we have the rest of the way in this row? Uh, more carrots. Do you remember what kind of carrots you put in there, Allie? Uh, you can turn around and tell your camera friends. We have purple carrots. Yep. We have red or orange carrots. We have yellow carrots. And yellow carrots. So we planted three different varieties and colors of carrots. The purple ones, does anybody remember what variety they were? They're called fire dragon. Carrots. Something like that, purple, Dra carrots. purple dragon carrots maybe. Yeah. Uh, and then we planted some uh, a French variety of a yellow colored carrot, and then some you know generic variety I guess uh, orange carrots. I'm not too good with all the 
the varieties that I tend to grow for specific things. I just know I have a ton of seeds. And this year, we were all about throwing some stuff in the ground so we can have an amazing fall and winter garden. All right, so here we're down to a couple of other rows of things that I started from seeds in the starter pots, you know, the little trays that you can buy and start a variety of things. These that are growing right here, I'm pretty sure, I'm not that good at marking and remembering everything. Do you remember what these are? I think they're broccoli. Broccoli, they do look like a broccoli, but I know they're not because we haven't planted broccoli yet. Does anybody remember what else I planted that's similar to broccoli? Do you remember, Jonathan? It's called cauliflower. Cauliflower, and this is a what, do you remember if it's a white variety? Or what color do you remember that I planted here? I think it's a white variety. So it's not. The typical cauliflower you find in the store is white, but this is a purple cauliflower variety that we had seeds for. So we'll see. We'll um, keep y'all posted. If they end up going all the way to a large head of cauliflower, we will definitely make a little video and keep you posted. So all of these are cauliflower. Down here we have a couple of calendula plants that aren't doing so hot. It's still warm here, even though these are cool weather crops. And so a lot of the bugs, caterpillars, and worms have definitely been hitting up our garden, but not enough that it's wrecked it. You know, we've still been able to harvest our own greens and things from here. So we just have to go in and kind of clean them up, pick out all the dead leaves and foliage that it has, some of the ones with the bigger holes and things like that. Here we have bok choy the rest of the way here, which is great in stir fries, and so we use that. The rest back here is bok choy, and surprisingly, because it's so warm here, one of my bok choys has actually already flowered. So this bok choy plant has bolted, meaning it's flowering and it's gonna go to seed, which probably if I harvested the leaves off of this, maybe some of the small ones would be okay, but chances are it'll probably be a little bit too bitter. But it's because the weather is too hot. These plants typically like a little bit cooler weather than we get here in North Central Florida. But the rest of this is bok choy. We have some uh, red Russian kale there at the end. You want to show them that one, Allie, where the, the Russian kale is? Right here. This one. Now this variety, unless you have maybe a farmer's market near you or some type of a co-op, it's not really a variety that's known to a lot of people because it doesn't look like the typical uh, dino kale, we call it, with the really rough crinkly leaves. This is a really, really tender kale variety, which we love to use in all kinds of stuff. And it's even great to just use raw in salads also. Now back here, little stink bugs. We have uh, Japanese giant red mustard greens. These things are so strong. They're great to put a leaf or two in a stir fry, uh, but they really have like a strong wasabi or horseradishy kind of taste. Okay, so they're not uh, for everybody, definitely. They're more of an acquired taste, but we like to grow them here and throw them in soups, stews, and stir fries. All right, so that's it for our quick little update video here on the homestead. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit it with the thumbs up, but remember, it's been a long time since we've done these videos and we have a lot of work to do around here. So really the best way to keep up with the homestead happenings is by following me on Instagram. I do a lot of video posts on the Insta stories and also pictures so you can keep up with exactly what's happening pretty much on a daily basis here on our homestead. So my handle at Instagram is at Crafty Gemini. So just do a search for that. You can follow me there. You can also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crafty Gemini. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Video, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next videos that I'll be posting and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Good girl. Good girl, Gracie.